to frisk you down that you might be able to go to school. You can't have a club and pray, but you can have a club and say, I want to be gay. This is so sad. We need to stand up and say, Lord, we need you to bless America like you've never blessed it before. Because we started out being a holy nation. But because of this guy Satan, we got any and everything to come in our home. Let me give you an example. HBO. You pay thirty nine dollars and forty cents for that mess to come into your home and captivate your children's minds. All matter of filthiness, all bad language. But you pay for that to come into your house. You're not being a good steward when you allow that filth to come into your house. You got computers and you don't put parental guides on it, and your sons and your daughters are getting addicted to pornography, and it's just because you didn't choose to put a filter on it. All right, all right. I'm here to tell you that Satan has a plan. It talks about it in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the wiles of the devil. It's a systematic plan that he has to destroy your family, to destroy you. And if you're not careful, because he's the prince of this world, He's got a bullseye with your name on it. All right. If you don't fast and pray, if you don't read your Bible, you'll become another right. Some years ago, I was taught that if I took the Bible too casually, I would become a casualty. Mm -hmm. See, everything in that Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving this earth. That's, right. That's what it stands for. That's right. But because we chose not to pick up the book, when the devil comes, we're often shook. And when he shakes us, we're But if we knew who Christ Jesus was, we'd speak to him in authority. You heard me, if you were here last Sunday at 8 o'clock, I said, speak to your situation. Say something like this, devil, because you chose to leave your first habitat, which is heaven, that's your bad choice. Amen. And I ain't got no love for you. Can you imagine you were made the most beautiful thing in heaven and you weren't satisfied with that? Think about me. Think about me. The Lord makes you good looking. And you have to tuck this and you have to redo this. Where is the compromise proof for perfection? The Lord made me the way I am. And the Bible says I was made in his image. So how can I talk that? I'm not letting nobody text this because I was wonderfully made. Now, so many times in this life, people ask me, they say, Who is Jesus? And I tell them, Jesus. It's like they're asking. He works wonders, amen? amen. Yeah. I tell people that Jesus is like Coca-Cola. He's the real thing, baby. Man. <laughs> I tell people Jesus is like Pepsi-Cola. You got the right one, baby. All right. <laughs> I tell people that Jesus is like Tide detergent. They say, what do you mean? I said, Jesus gets the stains out. Because see, the Bible says, not me, the Bible says, heaven gets bigger every day. Now this is what blows my mind. My Bible says that hell was never designed to capture man. Hell was made for Satan and one third of the heavenly angels to turn from their habitat and God cast them out. Yes. I'm going to share something with you. It says in Jude that a certain man, a certain number of those former angels are chained in darkness. They don't have any need to get a wicked, low down, dirty thought. 
that's where they come from. Because they have no movement whatsoever. They're in chains until the devil gets loose again. They're in chains. And that's where all that wicked, low down, dirty stuff comes. Yes. But I'm here to tell you, if you're anointed and appointed for such a time as this, it says you can cast down every vile and dirty thing yes, it does. and take on the mind of Christ. Just like that lady, she made up her mind. I don't care what it's going to cost me. I'm going to make it to Christ Jesus. I don't care what people say. I'm going to make it to Christ Jesus. I'm going to keep looking to Christ because he's the author and the finisher of everything I need. I'm going to press my way. Church, that's what we need to do today. We need to press our way. In spite of circumstances, in spite of what people say. That's right. Now, people say there's no miracles in the church today. I got a report from my brother that his heart started back after they stopped it. Isn't that right, uh, Eddie? Your heart amen. started back, amen? Yes, yes. All right. Now, um, the levies told me their precious little girl went and got hit by a car. They couldn't find one bruise. They couldn't find one mark. I consider that a miracle, amen? amen. amen. She's so little, the people got in the car never saw that. Now, when people tell you there's no miracle, tell them the church you go to, there's miracles every day. Because Jesus is what we need for such an occasion as this. When Sister Levy told me that, I shouted. I said, look at God. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. And I know they didn't love that children. Just like I love them. But now she's got a testimony. She can tell me, I got hit by a car. But Jesus dusted me off, and I'm done. Amen. Church, that's why I want you to pray for traveling mercy. If you pray for traveling mercy, that'll be the difference maker. Yes, it will. Katie told me that they were on their way out of town. And she went to rent a car. And she said she never, ever, ever bought extra insurance. But she said the Holy Ghost prompted her to buy all the insurance they could get. They were taking KK to somebody. And somebody pushed him into the embankment. The car flipped over several times. The car was towed. But Tim and Katie and Kaylin, they were all right. Amen. They Thanks prayed God. for traveling mercy. Yes. The car was total. But because she bought that insurance, uh -huh. 25 minutes later, they brought them a brand new car. Amen. I need to tell you, when you get in your car, ask the Lord yes. That's for traveling mercy. Yes. 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 Spencer, Spencer said that when her car was acting all crazy. She said she loved the Lord. But she said when the Lord delivered her and Reverend Kyle from that car, she said, what? I'm now in love with him because he saved you. Amen. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Let us all stay. Might there be someone that wants to make Jesus his or her choice? Might there be someone today that sick and tired of being sick and tired. You've tried everything else, but they're willing now to give Jesus a chance. Might there be one today standing in the need of prayer? Might there be one today that wants to make Jesus his or her show? Might there be one today? Might there be one today?